pray that uh, you may be with us and uh, may our, our song to be uplift to you. May our voice be heard, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, anybody have a favorite song? No? Okay, I'll choose one. <coughs> Oh, Kali? Yeah, go ahead, Kali. Colossians 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sits on the right hand of God. Set Let your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hidden in Christ in God. Seek those things, things above. Ye are dead, and your life is hidden in Christ in God. Seek those things, things above. Ye are dead, and your life is hidden in Christ in God. When Christ, who slays our lives, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Seek those things, things above, ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Seek those things, things above. Ye are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Daniel. Okay. We shall not wait to pray. We shall not need to fight. In this battle, set yourself standing still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them. For the Lord will be Set yourself, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. One more song, or One more song. One more song? Uh, Miss, Miss Janina? You just sang that. Matthew 24? Okay, Matthew 24. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness all to the nations and then shall the end come. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto our nation. And then shall the end come. And I saw another angel 
fly in the midst of heaven. Have we the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, every kindred, tongue, and people. For a witness unto our nation, there shall be echo. Thank you for singing. One more? Okay. One more. Oh, Jay? Oh, okay. Page nine. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Who shall I be? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an ocean camp against me, my heart will not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desire of the Lord, that I might seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will pick me up. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Await, I say. Thank you for singing. Thank you. That should help, wouldn't it? Well, I know the first thing on my list was to welcome the college back, but it won't open, but now it is. <laughs> we are glad that you are back safely, that you've had a good experience. We've missed you while you've been gone. We've prayed for you, and we are anxious to hear all about how the Lord has blessed your efforts. Tentatively, Friday night you have a special bonfire for the college and testimonial service. It's kind of dependent on the weather. That doesn't look real, real good right now. Um, but we can pray that it will hold back the rain. You know, Hurricane Delta is going to cause rain throughout the south, it looks like. Um, and we will be the re recipients, likely, of some of it. Uh, academy students are scheduled to have faculty home vespers. If you're going to a home in town, you need to be ready at the cafeteria at 545. Otherwise, at the staff homes at 6. Senior survival is rescheduled from this weekend, tentatively to next. Next Monday is Community Service Day. It's a day to get involved in helping people who need help. I've been reading um, sixth volume of the testimonies as part of my devotional time, and um, the section I just finished talked about are going into the community and helping those that are in need, particularly the older, poor, and um, weaker members of society. And that's what we attempt to do every year, usually a couple of times a year. 
And so Monday, that is on our schedule for Academy students. You'll meet at 745 in the cafeteria. Make sure you bring a water bottle. And college students, I'm sure you'll be informed. Hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, Tuesday begins construction on the gazebo. Uh, one of the nice things that we, Lord has provided for us this year. And we're looking for it to be done. The concrete will be two weeks old by then. Uh, we've gotten the roofing and Thursday, uh, the rest of the materials are supposed to be here. So um, we're excited about it. I think it's going to be a nice addition to campus, and we will um, we'll use it, I think, a lot. And so I'm just very thankful that the Lord is providing that unexpectedly. I think that is all of my announcements for today. Let's kneel as we pray. Father in heaven, I'm so thankful that you have watched over our students while they were gone, that they are able to return safely and to resume their college education. Lord, I know that there's always adjustments whenever we have a break, much less if we're gone for this long. And I just pray especially for our college students this morning that you will bless them as they make that transition from being active and working for you to being active in studying and preparing for greater ministry. Bless their efforts. Help their spirits to, and their focus to stay on you. And Lord, we ask that for all of us. We can easily be distracted, discouraged. I'm thankful that we have so much to take courage about with the precious promises in your word and the way you have led in our past experience. We pray that you will bless us now as we have this assembly, that you will um, speak to our hearts. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Got it? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, am I shaking now? <laughs> well, um, I one time Moses told me that the person staff from cafeteria never spoke at assembly for last three years. So how I end up wor uh, speaking here is totally by my mistake. I thought, I thought they were having a survey about the topics about assembly, so I just clicked all the topics that I want to hear. And uh, when I saw the assembly schedule with my name on it, not only once, it's twice, I was like, oh, why, am I, why my name is there? And then I was told that it was actually the volunteering speaking schedule. <laughs> So I was like, okay, should I talk to Magda or you know, Miss Harriet? I can't do this. But my husband said, oh, honey, you, you, you should do it. And uh, whenever, sometimes when the preacher talk about some things, like I'm not worthy to speak, and I feel the same way because I'm not the most cleanest person. That's why I chose this topic. <laughs> so... Um, uh, I hope that I was, it made me think, you know, as I prepare this, I hope that you may also got to think of something. 
Okay. Uh, I, I, when I look for something to talk about, I usually go by the definition first. So uh, I just did, a, I went on Google and typed cleanliness definitions. And uh, they actually come up with the three different things. The first one was the, the quality and states or habits of being cleanly or keeping oneself clean and neat. So which is talking about our personal cleanliness. It can be the hygiene or uh, something that how you, you know, wash yourself and uh, especially now we are facing this pandemic, COVID. So you may heard several times how to wash your hands for 20 you know, seconds. And uh, I can never you know, emphasize about the importance of you know, the cleanliness. And uh, second thing is uh, the keeping clean as a place. So not only about who, you know, ourself, but the area that sits around us. So, and then the last one was the, the, the quality and states or habits of being morally pure or upright. So that's which means it relates to our mind and our spirituality. I thought that was interesting, you know, even in the dictionary it says the, the cleanliness is not only has to do with our physical, you know, the things or the surrounding, but it also relates to our mind. And it's the, the other interesting thing was that it's not only about whether you are clean now, but it's about the also includes the habits, which is a continual, you know, what you do continually is also matters related to cleanliness. And uh, God knew the importance of cleanliness, so uh, he taught how to keep themselves clean when they're in the wilderness, right? Can you think of anything what God told them to do? Don't touch that things, right? And? Okay. And? With the shovels and cover up, right? <laughs> And anything else? Uh, wash yourself and uh, wash your clothes. And also, they, if they have a communicable disease, they were to be quarantined, you know? That was, that was like, wow. The, the, well, the Israelites knew what the quarantine was like. <laughs> and. Uh, the other thing was also God told them how to, what to, how to deal with the mold. If you see the mold, you know, sometimes you have to really burn the things up to get rid of it. And the uh, scientist usually tells that, you know, what they practiced was much ahead of science at that time. So it's another evidence that, you know, the, the God was really, you know, teaching them the more things that we didn't know. So knowing all this cleanliness, our room shouldn't be looking like this, right? <laughs> Have you ever been to the place like this? Oh, yeah? Oh. Actually, uh, I've, I only saw the room like this on the television. Never thought that I would actually be in the place like this, but I actually be in the place like this once, and that we were cleaning up, and it the person had a the cognitive damage, so that he was not able to make a decisions very well. So when he sees some things, he knows that he needs to clean up, but he ended up not doing it. So it was just piling up, and uh, his room was covered with the all kinds of leather and the trash. I literally couldn't see the floor. 
it took almost three days to kind of to see the floor, you know, for that person. And, um, and usually, I'm sure your dorm room doesn't look like this, right? And uh, this is more like dirty things. But some people, if they have a really mental problems, their house can be filled with junk. And they call this uh, hoarding, hoarding syndrome, right? And uh, when I show this picture to you, all of you are like, wow, right? <laughs> and it's because there's those things that how they make the mess can also affect our mind. And, and if you see the, all the dirty things, it's kind of gross you out. But how about if you have a nice and beautiful clean things, but gather, on that, gather around in your room. So like her place is not cluttered with the dirty, it's a clean stuff. But does that really look clean? Why is that? It's too much stuff, right? You just need to f either find a place to put away or uh, it seems like they need a help even though she was they are having the nice and clean stuff. In uh, Korea these days, um, there's a popular, uh, there's a business that is becoming really popular uh, which is, uh, we call it uh, house or home organization service. So uh, you, have you, you know about the cleaning service, right? You just go to the house and they just clean the bathroom and clean the kitchen and they get paid for their service. But the uh, home organization service is go beyond that. So not only they're just cleaning it, they will, if you see the house like this, they will make a space for it and they will put everything away or they'll move the furniture around and uh, basically instead of uh, buying the new things to decorate their house, they're getting rid of things and uh, by reorganizing their space, is they created like they had a new interior for their home. So, uh, is on a, they call it another like a minimal, minimal life service. So it's time to get rid of your stuff because these day we uh, in the city, they were blessed with so much stuff after living in a house for 10 years or something and they are attached to their stuff. Oh, this is you know, my gift from you know, five years anniversary, or this is a, the picture of my daughter's first drawing at the, you know, at the kindergarten. So they just gather things around and they, don't, they can throw it away with their, 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 their memories, you know. So just end up piling the house with the full of stuff. And uh, so, and they just, uh, and the piling the house with all these junk things. So, and uh, I like to watch those kind of blog because uh, they teach you uh, many different tips, not only, you know, how to, you know, make your bed, but how to, you know, put away your laundries and uh, how to organize, uh, when you are putting stuff away, you know, how to put the things in, in the more effective ways and effective places. And uh, here are some examples. The, the pictures that is above, it was the before. It looks nice and organized, but it kind of looks, they had uh, so much books, right? And uh, the, the, the team went in there and then they got rid of all the books because uh, now the children are grown up. They don't need that many books. So they took the bookshelves away and they make the room like very spacious, new apartment. 
and uh, there's another picture. I think this, the, the, the picture on the left is more like, more we see, you know, <laughs> in our closet. And because we tend to just put things away, right? And uh, instead of that, you know, uh, how to fold the uh, blankets in half and then pi the piling up that way. So that can be more effective that way. And uh, this is another hangers in the closet. Nice looking closet. Seems like there's nothing wrong with it. And uh, if you see the after picture. Yeah, the, um, here's some tip is when you want, at one enter into the room, the don't put all the little things right, you know, you, you, you can see because it looks more, uh, like I create like a more confusion, you know, in your vision. So the brighter color is better to see and makes the room more spacious. And the darker color or the thicker, heavier stuff has to be away from your, you know, where you can see that right away. And when you open the door, it's not good to see usually the closet. I mean, just have have to have a most simple item first, and the, all those book or the closet should be the against the wall so you don't see it right away. And uh, there's another one. Drawers, and uh, having just instead of putting your laundries in the drawer, they are very folded nicely and uh, packed away very neatly. So putting the closet in the upward, like vertical way, you can tell what you have. You can just take out what you use instead of going over, where is my, you know, pants, you know, and then after several times, you know, the way the thing that you made, you know, made a nice thing will disappear. So seeing this, I didn't grow up in a family Okay, <laughs> and the family which is very neat. So, just I'm just learning this, and I'm practicing it, practicing this, and in my house. So, what happened is every time when I open the drawer, it makes me feel really nice. I feel like you know I'm very treated very well, and it just makes you happy when you see the really nice organized things. And um, it's, uh, when I was searching for this, it says that if your husband and wife don't, it's starting to argue or something, that means maybe you have to uh, clean your room, clean your house, and reorganize your place, then it will make your relationship better. <laughs> and uh, I think that's also one thing, because this organization, these organized things, can make me more frustrated. So, so I decide to look for the cleanliness. Has like we saw the definition, can be the physical, mental, and spiritual. So I thought about just sharing the benefits of organizing the space. And uh, I found this from the, one of the blog on online, the mental health benefit of tidying up. First one is that it shows that we care for ourselves. That means it feels like uh, you are treated very well. It make it look like uh, you have a special gift every time when you are seeing something well, you know, tidying tidied up place. And it also can offer you, uh, for, uh, for us a sense of satisfaction. And when we take care of our space, 
it gives us a feeling of accomplishment, which our brains find tremendously rewarding. So every time when we open that, you know, drawer, you know, it, it kind of makes you feel like, ah, oh, I'm doing good, instead of like criticizing, you know, yourself. Um, I, as you all know, I work in the kitchen. The, when I first came, uh, the one thing that was really bothering <laughs> was the measuring cups. And uh, because before, in the one drawer, all the measuring cups and spoons are all in one place. So every time when I was looking for uh, cups, I have to sort through like, uh, where is one cup? You know, where is a half cup? You know, where is one teaspoon? Where is one tablespoon? It was so like, you know, frustrating. But now um, I divide it into the different sections. So everything will go into kind of, you know, where it's supposed to be. Sometimes it's not really there where it's supposed to be, but it's doing much better. <laughs> And uh, it makes cleaning easier. Once you have place cleaned, then uh, you can see where it needs to be cleaned right away. So it saves your time. And after even your cleaning, it makes you feel more satisfied. And uh, it fosters think clear thinking. The clutter fills our visual field and gives our brain the endless stimuli to process. So as a result, it's harder to focus on tasks as there are more things to draw our attention. So in contrast, tidy spaces let our brains relax, increasing our mental space and concentration. So imagine the, the room, first room, and you have to study in that room. Probably, I would like, you may have, your attention will be more on the dirty things, right? And it improves efficiency. And uh, like I say, if they, everything are in the well place, you will not have to look for where things are because you know exactly where things are and where it's supposed to be. So it's, uh, this is, it will save your time when you work. Also, it decreases frustrations. And uh, we can catalyze a further, uh, further change. Uh, making change in our living space gives us momentum that we can carry into other, er other areas of our life. So one thing you have a clean space, like for example, if you walk into really nice you know, kitchen, then you feel like, I want to cook something, right? If you see a really beautiful, nice desk, then like, oh, I want to study something on it. So, <laughs> so when you have a nice clean space, it encourages you to do something with it. So uh, I was, I don't know, what's the time? OK. I was looking in the why God has emphasized us so much of you know the the cleanness. I looked up on the Spanish home. It says the order necessary for a happy home. God is displeased with disorder, slackness, and a lack of thoroughness in anyone. And uh, that one was kind of rebuking to me. <laughs> I thought, you know, whatever is comfortable, whatever is easy was good, but uh, it, we need to have a rules and uh, God is not happy when I go, when I become like disorganized. And uh, order and cleanliness is the law of heaven. I can't imagine trash, you know, junkyard in the heaven. It will be really bad. <laughs> so. And the other one was that uh, cleanliness should become our second nature. And uh, it takes time. It's like, you know, when you're building habits, it's not going to happen right away. 
and uh, we have to be continually taught so until it becomes our second nature. And uh, the, have you all heard of quote, cleanliness is next to the godliness. And uh, I just found this quote that I was researching. And the way how God works is he just, as we practice this physical cleanness, and uh, he will see that, that it will, it, how it influence our mind and uh, how we cleanse our minds, we can have a more pure relationship with him. And uh, so think of the area that where you need to, where you need help in cleaning. Could it be your room, could it be your note, or could be your just closet, or could be your relationship, or could be whatever that is coming to your mind, right? So I hope and I pray that um, we will find the help that we need in our cleanliness so we can have a more pure and a holy and the relationship with Christ. Thank you. Should I finish with the prayer or how does it go? Assembly, we've never done assembly before. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for you know the sharing uh, for the thought of cleanliness. Lord, we need uh, a lot of help and uh, in this area, help us to see the mess in our life, whatever it is. I pray that you will uh, teach us and uh, help us to be our second nature. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen.